Welcome to Naisora's YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to demonstrate the practical application of ultrasound in difficult spinal anesthesia case. And we will specifically focus on obese patients with challenging anatomy where traditional methods of spinal anesthesia have failed. Ultrasound guidance may offer significant advantages in terms of precision and success rates in patients with difficult anatomy. And in this video, we'll walk you through these three essential steps for effectively using ultrasound in difficult scenario. Plus, we will share a variety of clinical tips that will enrich your skills and make you a more proficient practitioner with ultrasound and spinal anesthesia. Now, while some studies have shown the benefits of ultrasound guidance to spinal anesthesia, such as Grau and colleagues compared the real-time ultrasound guided techniques with conventional landmark palpation and found a significant reduction in the number of needle passes, or Chong and colleagues reported higher first attempt success rate with real-time ultrasound guidance, other studies have found no advantages of real-time techniques over traditional methods. Regardless, the overall evidence supports the use of ultrasound for improved clinical practice. In our practice, we use it for predicted difficult patients to determine the midline, the level of spinal anesthesia, and the depth at which you will anticipate to accomplish CSF return. Let's get started. We're going to place the the sterile uh, drape as long as low as we can. I'm going to put a bit of um, gel on the transducer and we're going to first assess the level, try to find the, the, the spinous processes. To find a spinous process, so there you can see that black acoustic shadow, that's a spinous process. So that's for us the midline. What you can do is take a sterile marker, place that in the middle of the screen on the ultrasound, and then you will know that the line, the middle line on the ultrasound uh, transducer is, is the middle. So I'm going to move the transducer a bit down. I'll find another spinous process. Put a little mark. Then the other thing we'll do is see where the uh, sacrum is and L1. So then we place the transducer in a longitudinal way, right off midline, so paramedian. And we look a little bit towards the midline. We try to see sacrum, the continuous line. I'm moving up and there you see that first drop. So that is L5 S1. I can put a line again in the middle of the transducer. This is L5 S1. Going up, you look for the second, you can see another one. Here. So that is L4 L5. And then there, with a bit of tilting and pressure, we can see L3 L4. Okay. okay, so the level that he was using was a bit higher, right? If we just physically try to push and feel the iliac crest, it is somewhere here, but if I push here, the iliac crest is actually under my fingers. So that would have been here. And the level that he punctured was quite higher, okay? So let's reposition the patient. You can let him sit straight, voila. So this is going to be the level we want to do our puncture. We already determined the midline. What you can do, in case you don't feel it at all, some patients are quite obese, and if you do the palpation, you won't feel anything. Then you place a transducer, and you try to see the, the, the spinous process, right? It's like this black, so the epidural space is about at six centimeters, yeah. right? Yes. Um, now we know. So what I'll do is... is I'll take some extra lidocaine because we're going to numb the skin first. This patient is 67 years old. When you do a, an ultrasound age. assisted procedure in patients that are above 65, I like to use this needle. It's a 22 or 23 gauge. 
but you have the advantage that you don't need to use the introducer with the floppy. You can actually reposition this needle without needing to struggle uh, with a 27 gauge one. So we place a transducer. I can see the midline. I'm going to take the local and I'll place the needle very close to that line in the middle of the transducer. Prikje naar meneer. Voilà. And you can actually follow on the, on the screen there. Yeah, here, it's not super visible. I'm a bit above it. I'm trying to make it see. There, see that little tip moving? That's yes. the tip of my needle. That little white dot. So I'm infiltrating with the lidocaine. Okay, we're going to do a midline approach. So taking this needle, we all agree that we can see the middle. We numb the skin and I'm going to place... And get rid of the interspace uh, of the uh, spinous process to get into the interspace. Yeah, but even if you... Let's say you even are not in the uh, interspace immediately. What I want to show is that with the ultrasound here, you can determine the exact middle. So we're going to go in with the needle. See, I'm a little bit off-center there. Just a tiny bit, so I can actually reposition. See the little tip? That's me. And as soon as I now advance, even if I now I touch the bone, I'm going to put my transducer down and I'm going to pretend I'm just doing a normal procedure. So I can walk off, advance the needle, I'm going to take out the guide and then advance. Probeer hem stil te houden. Don't move. Uh, niet bewegen, meneer. There. Now we have CSF. I'm going to take the guide and just go in and out to make sure there's no occlusion. It's coming back. So I'm going to immobilize the needle. OK. So we're going to connect. Niet bewegen nu, alsjeblieft. Niet bewegen, niet bewegen. Oh, sorry, we gaan zo, zijn zo klaar. Yeah. Voilà, I can aspirate and we inject. We're going to inject 10 milligrams, it's more than enough. Voilà, and that's it. More? As you could see in the video, for better clinical practice, incorporating ultrasound guidance into neuraxial blockade is recommended. Ultrasound guided techniques can facilitate successful access to the intrathecal or epidural space, particularly in patients with difficult spinal anatomy or obese patients where you can't feel or identify any landmarks. But familiarity with the sonoanatomy and ultrasound guided methods may significantly enhance your technical skills performance and safety only if you practice it regularly in easy patients. Thank you for watching Nesora's YouTube channel. We hope these practical tips will help you in your clinical practice. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more insightful videos like this. Until next time.